So I'm here in front of uh, McCormick Hall, the Art Museum and Marquand Library. And well, let's go inside. So the museum is still completely closed, but the uh, Markwind Library is open on a limited basis. Now first, before going inside the library, I'm going to wash my hands. Marquand Library is named for Alan Marquand, Princeton class of 1874. He returned to Princeton in 1881 to teach logic, but was encouraged by President McCosh to switch fields and to focus on the history of art. So he became a professor of art and also the first director of the University Art Museum. Alan Marquand was a major collector of art books and his personal collection formed the initial core of Marquand Library, which since then has grown to some 500,000 volumes. And so we'll go now to the second floor, the Tang Seminar Room. Okay, so here we are in the, inside the seminar room of uh, Marquand Library with some great uh, books on Versailles, part of the rare books collection of Marquand. Marquand has its own rare book collection. And uh, here is Holly Hathaway who is helping us. She's the head of Marquand um, Library. And also to help us is Julie Melby from the Graphic Arts Collection, curator of the Graphic Arts Collection in Firestone Library, which also has great holdings. But here we're just focusing on actually just a, f a small portion of the Marquand materials. And you can see they already fill up the whole table because there are some very large uh, volumes. So we're gonna just take a look at some of these, mostly it's albums of views of Versailles and Versailles sculptures and fountains. Our first two volumes today are recent acquisitions that were made in preparation for the exhibition Versailles on Paper, which was held in 2015 in Firestone Library. And in this context, both volumes were digitized and are now available in high resolution through the library catalog. And they both are part of an important printmaking project, which is known as Le Cabinet du Roi, or the King's Cabinet. That is a large series of high quality engravings commissioned by Louis XIV. Some of these prints were commercially available, but most of them were distributed as royal gifts to ambassadors or courtiers, for example. And what is typical of these presentation volumes is their binding in red Morocco leather with the royal arms at the center surrounded by gilt tooling, triple fillets, and at the corners, the cipher of Louis XIV, the double L, surmounted by a crown. So these um, gilt, gilt ornaments are also repeated on the spine. Again, um, the L's with the crown, and also here you see the fleur de lis in the corners and even tinier fleur de lis that are repeated then to form these squares between um, the raised bands of the binding. And if we go, they go to the title. Wait, wait. 
a little more. So Perfect. it says here, um, plan, vue, et ornement de Versailles. So plans or maps, views, and ornaments of uh, Versailles. So this was put together, we don't know exactly when, maybe 1685, 1690, as a, as a picture album of um, recent embellishments at Versailles uh, and giving really a great overview um, of the developments at Versailles, especially outside in, in the gardens. So this is the earliest uh, map of the park with the Ménagerie, Trianon not yet built, the Orangerie um, still very small, the palace very small, the labyrinth not really equipped yet with, with fountains. So this volume now really continues and gives an overview of the development. Here is a floor plan of the um, chateau as it was in 1668. And you see this volume, this copy has some, some spots, some foxing, but the engravings themselves are, are in pretty good shape. So we were very lucky to, to get this uh, for Princeton. These are mostly etchings done by Israel Silvestre, who was famous for his views of um, towns and landscape, topographical etchings. And now this is the envelope, so the palace is growing, still Silvestre um, doing the views. This is famous view from the garden side with the palace and the terrace before the Hall of Mirrors uh, covered the terrace. And now this is great. Now I'll ask Julie to help me. This is a fold out. And I'm not sure actually, I haven't seen this in a while, how many sheets. I did this yesterday. <laughs> So this is actually the orangerie, the main facade, one of these sides, and the balustrade is even illustrated. Now let's actually look at this. Are these, this is very large for a print, right? So these seem to be several. Here's the cut. So one, two, three, four. So they assemble four sheets probably together. And I think we have another one in the next plate is also a photo. You may want to use your handheld for this one. Yeah. So let's see, this is another huge fold out. I'll try to capture it here because it's too big for the hover cam. And now first you may think this is the palace facade, but actually these are simply the stables. So it's the palace for the horses. But this was also a major construction project by Mansart, who also did the Orangerie, who did the north and south wings. And so they also wanted to make sure to document this. And again, it is dated and signed by Pierre Le Poutre, 1689. Okay, so let's put this together. And this is actually the end of the first section on the palace and the general views and plans. And then I think we have about 50 prints of the ornaments. And the ornaments are the fountains, the sculptures, so this is Latona, the Latona fountain in its first state, 1678. And now the volume continues with a pretty complete record of all the early fountains. And some of these um, do not exist anymore. So the prints are the only record along with sometimes uh, drawings in archives. Siren. This was right in front of the palace. 
And here we have more smaller sculptures from the Allée d'eau, from the water alley. Here are some arms of gods. And then we have some vases, I think. Here we go. A bronze vase. And another one. Okay, so this is the first sequence. Now, actually, that's not all that is in this volume, because then it was bound with another publication, which was initially separate. And it starts here. So here they actually misbound this floor plan, which should come after this title page. And so this is the description of the grotto published in 1679. And the description itself is by André Felibien. And we can see again, maybe we can zoom in a little bit on the center. We can see again the arms of Louis XIV. And again, the Fleur de Lis border. Okay, zoom out. So this actually has a letterpress text, text that was composed like Gutenberg um, did, not just engraved or etched. And this was a feature of the earliest publications of Versailles that they combined letterpress text with um, the prints with the Im images. Okay. And so here now we have then the um, 20 images of the grotto. Right. So the facade and then of course the interior and the marble group. Here. Another copy of these grotto engravings can be found in the graphic arts collection in Firestone Library. It has also been digitized in high resolution. And now we move on to our second volume from the Cabinet du Roi series. So we have the title with exactly the same lettering as before. And so now this one says Grande Pièce de Messieurs Lebrun et Mignard. So this actually combines engravings after ceiling decorations by Lebrun and Mignard. Now they were rivals, of course. Mignard could never get a commission at Versailles while Lebrun was uh, reigning there. But after the death of um, well, after the death of Colbert, especially, Mignard also got, um, got a commission, which we will see represented in this volume. And this volume was probably assembled then, maybe around 1700, 1730, also early 18th century, um, to bring together some monumental prints. We have a book plate, an armorial book plate, Archibald Philip Earl of Rosebery, and he is known as a collector but also as a politician, he was prime minister of the United Kingdom at the, eight, at the end of the 19th century. And there is also here an intriguing uh, clip from a, from a sale catalog. And this actually comes from an 1883 sale known as the Hamilton Palace sale. So it's possible that this volume actually came from the collection of the Dukes of Hamilton. And they in turn inherited the collection of William Beckford who was a, an English writer and uh, arts and book collector. So this is now um, on quite heavy paper, which suggests that it is actually, that, that these prints were actually run off um, a bit later than the ones that we saw before. This is a format of paper that was in use um, more in the 18th century than in the 17th century. And it starts, with a set of seven prints documenting the ambassador's staircase, starting with this frontispiece title page, 
Now here the text is all engraved. So there's no letterpress text describing um, the staircase. So there was a, an engraver who did the images and another engraver who specialized in engraving text. And this is actually a kind of a puzzle. So this has now six elements. And if one wanted, one could cut them out. So this bind these elements, cut them out along the edges, and they would all fit together as one huge uh, piece showing the ceiling of the ambassador staircase. And each of these elements also has, again, in an engraved description at the bottom. So there's six of these, the four corners and the two sides. And the, the text is, uh, follows the images around in a circular way so that it would work if one wanted to assemble it. And here actually we have all the signatures. We have Lebrun as the inventor. We have Baudet as the engraver. And here a smaller signature. Can we see this? It's uh, Beret who uh, engraved the text. This is a signature that one seldom sees, I think, on prints strip, stripsit. And usually it's sculpsit or excluded for the publisher. So here we have so much text that that also deserves a credit. So this is the first set engraved by Boudet. This was engraved pretty early. Again, here perhaps printed a bit later. And then it was combined with this overview of the staircase. So this is actually the same image, the same object, but now in one print but if one wanted now, one could try to match each a corner with the larger, uh, more detailed engravings. And here again, uh, Lebrun is credited and the engraver here was Charles Simonot. So, so much for Lebrun, but now the volume continues with Mignard. This is a quite a different style. And this was another uh, feature actually just next to the ambassador staircase was the Petite Galerie, which was part of the King's private apartments. And this was basically his personal art collection. So there would be the Mona Lisa, for example. And for the ceiling, Mignard was commissioned to produce allegorical paintings. This is just one side painting. This is another side, I think. And this is the main scene. So this is an allegorical scene of Apollo distributing rewards to sciences and arts and Minerva crowning le génie de la France, the genius of France. And apparently uh, this was supposed to um, illustrates the Duke of Burgundy, the grandson of Louis XIV. Okay, and then this volume has still more prints by Lebrun, after Lebrun and Mignard, but not related to Versailles. So we're gonna uh, skip those to turn to some of the other books. After these uh, two official albums in Red Morocco with Royal Arms, uh, we now move on to some semi-official or unofficial publications that were uh, the result of private initiatives by engravers or um, print sellers. Um, they still needed the privilege du roi as in this, on this title page. So they needed the permission from the crown to reproduce and then publish and sell um, these Versailles elements. This is then a second album on the Ambassador's Staircase, which was published around 1725. And this complements actually the set of prints that we just saw by Baudet, 
by showing what the first series did not show. Now here again, it's interesting, everything that's text in here is actually engraved. So there's no letterpress, everything is, is uh, in this more uh, handwritten uh, form, handwritten style. And uh, you can see also that this is now 18th century, the type of letters here are becoming a bit more ornamental, more decorative. So it's uh, Louis XV now, and it is consacré à la mémoire de Louis le Grand. It is um, dedicated to the memory of uh, Louis XIV. Also here again, beautiful calligraphy with the uh, fleur de lis. So this starts with a description of the staircase, which the earlier series did not have. Pretty detailed. And then it documents first the exterior, and then especially all the interior sides, again, with starting with the floor plan. Entrance. So the top is what we had seen in the other, in the earlier print series, but now we also get the whole staircase itself with the illusionistic um, decoration of the walls, these fake tapestries, fake balconies. This was all painted by Lebrun, and here now it it is reproduced in the engraving. And each detail is documented in quite exact fashion. And then it gets a little easier to limit it in. Oh, that's perfect for you. I can even zoom a little to start. So here's another case. This is now a German production reproducing the Grotto book that we saw in the first volume. And this was uh, produced in Augsburg, which was a center for these kinds of ornamental uh, decorative prints by someone called Johann Ulrich Kraus, or Kraus. And his wife was also a well-known engraver. So they often worked together in copying, reproducing French uh, productions. And this is a description of the grotto in French, but it also has the German translation. And then, so it starts with the, with the French description. This typography is similar to the, to the French one. And then it goes to the German translation and then also the typography shifts to this older German typography, sometimes called black letter, I think. And then each of these 20 prints that we saw in the original publication is reproduced here also, but in smaller format. And it is all, I think each of these is reproduced in reversed reverse. So what is left in the original becomes right. Here is the Krauss copy of the Apollo group and the original. The captions reproduce again the French and the Latin and they add also uh, German description, German uh, captions. And in this copy, it's interesting also because it is bound. So the German copy is bound with an original French publication by Jean Le Poutre, who is one of the engravers who also uh, worked on the grotto. And this is now a Paris publication of a set of prints by Le Poutre of imaginary grotto designs, Crotte à l'Italienne, Crotte et Jardin à l'Italienne. So probably there was someone who was interested in this and who may have then actually combined the French and German publication together.
All right, so this is a, a wonderful album of about 280 or so views of Paris and surroundings, especially palaces and gardens around Paris. So it has a general title, Vue des plus beaux bâtiments de France, views of the most beautiful buildings of France. And it was published by uh, Nicolas Langlois, member of a famous uh, print seller uh, family, Rue Saint-Jacques à la Victoire. And here he actually, he advertises all the rest that one can buy in his shop, geographical maps and portraits and fashion prints. Okay, and so here we actually have a, an interesting book plate Again, an armorial book plate with a Latin motto. And this is Sir John Anstruther of that ilk baronet. And that's a, a well-known Scottish clan. The Anstruther, uh, Scottish politicians, members of parliament. And this is probably the first of these baronets, uh, Anstruther. So he may have bought this around 1700, 1720, perhaps. And this uh, book starts with some general views of Paris. The exact engraver isn't always known. It, it, it's used, usually referred to as the Perel album. This was a family, father and at least two sons, and they specialized in these commercial, commercially available uh, views of Paris. So we'll have to go a little bit to the middle here. There is a lot on Paris, all the squares and churches, the observatory, the Sorbonne. And then it goes to chateaus around Paris, Vincennes, Conflans. And clue burnt down. I think we're getting closer now to Versailles. Well, some Saint Cloud details. So you, here you actually have smaller prints printed on one sheet. Meudon. This is the start of the Versailles section. So this has a, a title page of its own, Les Vues des Plus Beaux Endroits de Versailles, the most beautiful places uh, of Versailles, fait par Perel, but no first name given. And this can be bought from Longlois. So again, as we've seen with other examples, um, you didn't have to buy the whole 250 prints, you could also just ask for 20 of Versailles or 30 of Paris. So here, for example, this is the Colonnade Grove, which was a fairly late addition by Mansart. And this is not known from official, uh, from the official albums. It still exists today, so we can actually now compare the accuracy of the image with uh, the current grove. And the Perel also always include courtiers, uh, gardeners often, a lot of dogs, some children to animate the scene to make it less monotonous. Here's a wonderful map of the labyrinth, which is not just a map, but it also shows each fountain at each corner. This is the Trianon, the first version of the Trianon Palace, which again was not uh, documented otherwise. Here we have, well, this is now the map of the second Trianon, the marble Trianon. The Menagerie, the zoo. And 
And these views of the menagerie are often reproduced also because they are almost the only extant uh, views. Another very comprehensive Perel album with slightly different contents is kept in Firestone Library. It has been digitized and it seems to represent a slightly earlier state of some of the prints. Many captions are here still handwritten and not yet engraved. Finally, our last um, album for today is a bit later, it's from about the middle of the 18th century, but it is in the tradition of the Perel views of Paris and, um, and French palaces and gardens. This is all the work of one uh, draftsman and engraver called Jacques Trigot, who apparently came from Marseille and then uh, established himself in Paris. I think in this album, the order is a little bit uh, chaotic, so it jumps around quite a bit, whereas the Perel was organized in sections. So we'll just go through here and there will be a few, I think about 18 um, prints showing specifically Versailles. And right, so for example, here we have now a chateau um, that is associated with Madame de Pompadour, who is uh, the mistress, one of the mistresses of Louis XV. So we are now really in a different uh, era, 1740s to 1760s about. So this is actually kind of a title page here, Endroit Remarquable, Du Jardin et du Parc de Versailles, a little bit with, as with Perel, with the beaux endroits, les plus beaux endroits, so remarkable places in the garden and the park. He also, Rigaud also um, engraved the palace, but in this copy, the emphasis is on the garden. And this is now a, a view over the Orangerie, and here really Rigaud, um, he emphasizes a lot the people. So in Perel, they were more accessories, but now sometimes the, the courtiers, the visitors, the dogs uh, become more important than perhaps the scenery. And again, the style is typically mid 18th century now, very elegant, gallant uh, court life. Here we have Latona, but again, the Latona, the fountain itself is actually not uh, so easy to see. It's more perhaps about the people and the people then mingling with the, the statues. These Rigaud prints were also often copied abroad and also often hand colored. So then they also become quite attractive, populated by a lot of people. And the Neptune basin, which was a new element in the 18th century under Louis XV. And perhaps that's why the description here is actually quite detailed. And here the captions again specify that this was done with the privilege du roi, with the royal permission, and that it can be bought chez l'auteur from the author Rue Saint-Jacques, where most of the booksellers and print sellers had their stores. And here too, the digitization, which is available through the library catalog, allows close-up examination of the etching in all its details. <laughs> 